Hello the Darkness Roof 4 here and in today's video I'll be doing a brief showcase of this counter as well as a tutorial. So first of all this counter can be configured as a down counter or an up counter. At the moment without inverting the outputs we have it as an up counter. So this uh, uses binary of course so oh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 etc. However, this counter is uh, a bit more advanced than your, say, typical, uh, like a T flip flop design because we have a reset button over here and we can also set certain bits. So, say you wanted to use this as a program counter and you were doing maybe conditional branching, you wanted to um, set it to a certain number, or well, you could, first of all, you can just reset it like this. And then you can set the certain bits that you want the number to be. So it's, it's quite a useful counter in that regard, as well as it being fairly fast. The only one downside of this counter is that it is not synchronous. So um, let's actually just say put it up to 7, for instance. And as you can see, it takes some time before it goes to 8. It isn't an instant change. You can kind of fix this with a circuit like this, but the timings are a bit sketchy. And as you can see, so if we just pulse it once, um, um, it can kind of work. And we don't really get too many transition states. However, yeah, the, the more you expand the counter, the more transition states will get, and it's it's just a bit annoying. So that's just a problem with um, ripple counters like this. So first of all, a few basics. So why why would you use this counter instead of a simple design like this T flip flop? Well, for instance, uh, a T flip flop basically will toggle between the different states. So if it's a one and we input something, it'll go to a zero, and if it's a zero and we input something, it'll go to a one. So, to make this into a counter, we can just connect it to another T-flop, T-flop, T-flip-flop, by connecting the inverting output to the, well, the in on the other T-flip-flop. So, the, the clock of the other T-flip-flop. So, for here is a different kind of counter, and it works fairly well. However, it does come with a few problems. So, this design isn't really used that much, just because of those problems. But what it uses is it just uses a basic clock. So as you can see, um, say I just uh, let this clock run loose, it will just continue flashing and giving us a pulse. However, so if it's a zero and if I give it a quick pulse, it'll go to a one. And if it's a one and I give it a quick pulse, it'll go to a zero. So why, why are these counters not used? Well, the main problem is that you can't reset them and that that's quite a big problem. So uh, these counters are a lot better uh, because you can reset them. One of the uses of um, counters like this is for instance a modulo n counter uh, where n being a number which you'd want the, the counter to count up to. For instance in my last video um, I showed off this counter where I count up to the number 10 and then it resets back to 0 instead of say being limited to like a binary digit for instance. So, um, this counter counts in binary code decimal, so we can count from 0 to 10. Of course, you can also chain them, so this is the slightly improved design, which I'll be showing in a minute. And as you can see, if we put it on the clock, uh, we can create a decimal counter. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and when it hits 10, it'll go into the 10 column. So this is, of course, a decimal being represented by binary coded decimal. So we have uh, so 1, 2, 4, 8, then we have 10, 20, 40, 80, then we have 100, 200, 400, and 800. And the reason we use binary coded decimal is, for instance, if we have a, a display like this, for instance, a seven segment display, if you wanted to make a simple um, say 0 to 999 counter, well you'd use a counter like that. This counter over there actually counts to 999. So, and we can use binary code decimal to represent, um, say like the 1's column, the 10's column, the 100's column. 
First of all, I want to give a quick credit to this old design over here. So I showed this off in my modular end video. If I if I can find the original website or creator that I got this off, I'll try to link it in the description. But if not, um, it's, it's quite an old design. And what I basically did is compact it down a bit and, and just make it a bit faster as well. So to, to first of all, uh, build our new design over here. Um, we're going to want to make a, a, a chain of lock repeaters. So if you just build up and uh, we're just going to go out like this, make a long line. And we're going to have a repeater for every um, uh, binary digit we want. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. And actually, actually let's just go with... Um, let's only let's only have our counter be a four bit counter. So now that we've done this, uh, we're just going to put blocks like this, and over here will be our input. So to to input to this counter, unfortunately, we're going to need um, a pulse shortener. So we're going to want to have a two tick pulse into this counter, which is a bit annoying because a a proper counter using say uh, latches would not need a pulse input it would just be able to the pulse could be as long as possible and it would still work so for instance this um, t flip flop design while it doesn't have a reset say i had a really long pulse it would still just work so as you can see the pulses can be long and they can be short and they just work so now after we've done this uh, we're going to want to put torches this side like this we we'll want to break the actually before we break these blocks uh, we can build down like this so i'm going to build across like this break these blocks and these ones because we don't need them and then we'll also want to put torches this side as well now we're going to want to place some blocks on top of these torches like this and we're going to place more torches this side. So if the repeater is going this way, the torch will be this way. Now if we place a block on top of these, we can um, actually build the next part of the counter by just extending this out. And I think it was this many blocks. Uh, I'll correct it in a minute. But now, now after we've done this, we can place more blocks down like this. A repeater. Oh, repeater on one tick down into each of these repeaters over here so we can create a locking repeater as you can see and once we've done this uh, we're gonna block up like this place a redstone torch here and then place a block on top of that redstone torch block here and a redstone torch here then we're gonna put dust on top of that so as you can see we've created a simple um, set reset latch so we can reset it this slash isn't happy i forgot the last bit which was there was some dust over here so we can set it and we can also reset it so this is quite useful oops did not mean to break that and this is the basic the basically the heart of this counter design so now that we've done this we of course want to bring it um, all the way with dust all the top like that so where we have these four we want to extend it for all the rest of our bits as well um, I think for this digit we don't actually need one, so I'm just going to leave it like that. And let's just finish these bits too. So of course placing the torches on the inside so that these repeaters get powered by them. And then placing torches this side and placing blocks with dust this side so we can actually uh, form the latch. Now we've we've basically created our latches, created a path where the data can go into each different um, latch, but now we need to uh, finish it up and connect it all together so that it can reset the latches. If the, if the bit after it is a one, then it'll reset the latch to zero. And there's, there's just stuff like that. So we can extend this out um, I think it's three blocks. Um, actually, I think it's only two. So extend it out two blocks, block up like this, and a redstone torch here. 
So we're going to do this for each of them. So if we just build this like that. So the rest of dust down like this. And then of course a block up on each of them. And then redstone torches this side. So the, the these may start flashing, but that's fine because we can fix it in a minute. So now that we've got all of that, it's basically almost done. So to fix these flashing, you can just activate them like this with buttons. So now that we've done this, we want to add the last uh, mechanism to this, which is the reset bit. So over here, this side, or you could even do it um, from above using torches like this for instance and then run a line down like this and of course invert this and then whenever you want to reset the counter you can do this however this also adds to the height of the counter so what we can do instead is go behind like this and add repeaters over here on one tick and rest and dust down like this and we can have our button here so the reason we use the repeaters is because, of course, this torch powers this block, which powers um, dust either side. So say this torch was on, for instance, let's just turn it on. It would power all of these ones and it would just reset itself by accident. So we want to be using repeaters like that. So as we can see, it's a fairly compact design and let's actually get to testing it. So now uh, we can just input using a button, for instance. So we have one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm pretty sure all the rest actually, I think it all works because this bit was able to go on. So actually let's uh, set it to 15 and then clock one and they should all set to zero. There we go. So let's test uh, the reset functionality. So if we have the number five in, and we reset it, it goes down to zero. So uh, just a quick modification on this design. Say you want to make it into a modulo N counter. Well, first of all, of course, like my previous video showed, uh, say we want to uh, be a binary coded decimal one. Um, so modulo 10, uh, first of all, uh, we find the digits that make up 10, so eight and two. And then we're just gonna create a simple AND gate like this. And then we can go up one and have our torch here. And this will mean when um, it's 10, uh, we'll get a one. And then we can go up like this. Go across like this. And then plug this straight back into the reset down like that. So when, so let's put the number nine in. When we clock it one more and it hits 10, it'll reset down back to zero. You will have that like brief 10 in the system, but uh, you can just add other mechanisms to get rid of that. So now you may be wondering, how do we turn this into a down counter? So while we could completely redesign it and turn it into a proper down counter, the most easiest solution is just to invert the outputs like this. So if we, of course, we start at the number 15. So even if we reset it, we'll start at the number 15. And um, let me just, actually this bit can stay. And when we clock it, so 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, and of course this will go all the way down to zero and then back up to 15 and wrap around. So this counter also wraps around. Also, just a quick correction to my previous video, the modular N counter. Um, say we had a down counter, for instance, we wouldn't be able to use an AND gate because um, the number would um, already be higher. So say the number 11 would, um, since we have the AND gates being on digits two and uh, eight to get 10, well, 11 would also activate two and eight. So instead we have to use a X, X nor gate. So the way we can do this is a bit more complex. However, it works out just the same way. So we can, so we take these outputs over here and we're just going to say, uh, let's just plug this into a vertical um, XNOR gate. So we have, so four 
outputs and we're going to go up one like this uh, across like that stone torches like this blocks on top of these then we're going to have a uh, block up like this uh, dust on top of these and here as well I think I built this right and on this side we're going to have torches like this uh, now we can go up um, I think it's like this and we can place torches down like this so if we build these over here torches on all these bits dust here Resident torches here we can go up two like this and then um, let's say torch here and dust on top of these bits so let me just try this uh, then we'll connect them all together and put a redstone torch on the end to make it into an x nor gate so say um, we're inputting the number one 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 into um, it at the moment however uh, oh, I forgot torch here uh, we are we're inputting the number one 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 and zero 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 so our output is zero but say when we input the number one 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 and one 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 uh, one our output goes to a one so an XNOR gate is also used as a comparator gate so using a, a comparator for a down counter like this um, is a bit more clever because while it is complex um, let's just put a repeater here it also means that you can change it on the fly because we have these inputs over here so of course we can set it to 10 so so 8 and 2 so we have it set to 10 but we can like put it down to 9 for instance or whatever we can input down uh, to this quite easily so of course let's just see an action so 15 14 13 we're, lo we're looking at these torches over here 12 11 and when it hits 10 it should reset back to 15 there you go so that's a quick correction for my previous video and just be aware if you're using a down counter you need to use an xnor gate instead of an and gate you'd normally use an xnor gate as well for an up counter but since um, it would never reach the number combination beforehand you can get away with just using an and gate because uh, it, it just works a bit better and it's a bit more com uh, simpler than something like this which is an xnor gate so yeah i hope you like this video uh yeah please like and subscribe and i'm out